Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to manage your channel strip settings for use with Logic Pro. So channel strip settings are really awesome because they allow you to save as well as recall all of the audio effects that are on a particular channel strip. And so you can save these as presets to load up in other projects. So for example, here's a lead vocal channel strip setting that I've saved that I can instantly recall and use in any project. And this will work with third-party plugins and stock Logic plugins. Now, when you work with software instrument tracks, this takes it a step further because it will save the audio effects, but also the instrument and any MIDI effects you might have. So let's go ahead and pull up a channel strip setting of a custom instrument I created. And you can see it remembers the two MIDI effects that were on here, the sampler setting and the sampler patch, along with any effects. For aux tracks and track stacks, you can also store these in here as well. So if you have an aux track with a bus assignment, for example, let's say let's use bus one here, and maybe we wanna load up a custom reverb setting that I like to use. I can load that up right here. So here's a vocal reverb preset that I've created with Realm from Native Instruments. And you can also use channel strip settings to store and recall your custom mastering chains. Now, the more of these you create, the bigger your list of channel strip settings is going to get. But what I like to do, as you can see here, is I like to save these in folders by project or by category. So if you have certain mixing or instrument or mastering chains that you like to use, it's really helpful to organize these. So let me show you how you can access these and organize these on your computer. To find your channel strip settings folder, you're gonna go to Macintosh HD. If you don't have your hard drive on your desktop like this, you can just go up to go and then go down to computer and then you'll find Macintosh HD. So open up Macintosh HD find the users folder from users, go to your username, go to music, go to audio music apps, and then go to channel strip settings. So the bus folder is gonna contain all of your aux track and track stack channel strip settings. Instrument is going to store all of your software instrument channel strip settings. Master is a folder that's not really used in the newer versions of Logic. This is just here for compatibility reasons for when you open up projects from older versions of Logic where they didn't have the stereo output. The mastering chains are all gonna be stored under your master output or output folder here. And then all of your audio track settings are gonna be stored under track. Just one quick thing to be aware of here, if you create an aux track in here and that aux track doesn't have a bus assigned for its input, and then you try to recall a channel strip setting, it's actually gonna show you the track channel strip settings, the same as uh, the audio tracks. Whereas if that aux track actually has a bus assigned to it on its input, it's gonna show you the bus channel strip settings. So just be aware of that. And then there's one more folder in here called processing. This is going to save any channel strip settings for selection-based processing. So for example, if you have an audio file and you double click on it, this will bring you to the track editor. And then from here under functions, you can go to selection-based processing. If you want to save any channel strips for selection-based processing, they will show up in here. And so you can see I've got this RX11 D-click stereo that I use to D-click recordings. And if again, if you wanna manage these, put them in folders, you could just create the folders within this folder. Once I create a lot of these, like for example, under my stereo output channel strip settings, some of these I don't really use anymore and some of these need to be organized. So let's go to the output folder here. And a couple of these, I'm gonna drag into this folder. We'll keep both of those. And then, you know, some of these I'm not using anymore, but the over-unders, let's create a new folder for them. There we go. And then let's throw all those over-under settings in their own folder. And then this one, I can go ahead and delete it. And so now when I go back to my stereo output channel strip settings, 
you'll see that these are nice and organized into folders. Again, as you start saving these, and if you just save them directly in the main folder, you may end up with a list of you know dozens of these channel strip settings. Creating folders and organizing them is, is quite easy if you just know where to locate them. Now, another way this is really helpful is if you're working with a collaborator and you both have a copy of the same project, but you tweak a few of the effects settings or the channel strip in your project, rather than having to send the entire project over to your collaborator, if they just need to tweak a few tracks with your new effects settings, you can actually just send the CST file for that channel strip setting and your collaborator can just stick it in this folder and load it up on their end without having to you know download and open up a project with your changes in it now channel strip settings aren't going to affect things like the volume level or the sends on a track or the bus routing on a track and it's certainly not going to affect you know edits and automation in the tracks area but if the only change you've made is opening up, you know, one plugin and making a bit of a change and then saving it, you can actually just save that channel strip setting again. And then let's go ahead and just throw this in the main folder. Then you can find that CST file and then just email that file to your collaborator. These are tiny files compared to logic project files. So that's how you can manage your channel strip settings, creating folders and deleting old ones that you don't use anymore. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Remember, the Music Tech Help Guy YouTube channel is now 100% sponsor free. I no longer entertain any advertisers or paid influencer brand deals. The channel exists because of you guys and because of your support. So I wanna thank you very much for for that. The number one thing you can do to continue to grow this channel is to like the videos, share them, and subscribe to the channel. But if you'd like to directly support the channel, you can head over to my website, logicproguide.com, where I've got various courses with demo content that you can follow along with. I have multi-tracks that you can use for practicing mixing, along with some sound libraries. So as always, thank you so much for the support, and thanks for watching.